Welcome to Font Tribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Font Tribute. So I'm here with Aaron again. Aaron, glad to have you on the call. Thank you. Great. So who or what are we talking about this week? We're exploring the wonderful world of slab serifs. Um, we took a look at our lovely application font stand, and we found two cool slab serif fonts that we wanted to compare. We have Brace, which was designed by Letters from Sweden, and Aglet Slab, which is a release from XYZ Type Foundry. Um, and we thought these were kind of had a lot of unique aspects. So um, let's share them and kind of show some of the finer details of these fonts. Excellent. So the first one is an N, right? And what are you, what are you seeing that stands out to you when you look at this N? Oh, golly. Definitely this very unique little uh, knobby sort of, is that even considered a serif anymore? What is it considered? What would you describe that as? A spur? Spur? <laughs> yeah. Really, really unique. So that I have a feeling is going to greatly impact kind of the texture of of text written in this typeface. It's going to, that's kind of an unusual construction. So I think that's going to stand out a lot, uh, out a lot. It's going to be quite unique. And then also kind of, this is interesting to see the um, different approaches to the, you know, the, the feet, the serifs of these, the bottoms of these ends. Tell me what your initial thoughts are on these. Well, like you said, the uh, spur kind of treatment of the serif and in ag Aglet, uh really stood out to me as well. I think also just in the genre of slap serif that they're both in that genre, but they're very different approaches about that. You know, Agonlitz is much more rounder treatment. You can kind of see in how, whoop, I'm not drawing yet. Doop, there we go. Uh, basically, you can see how that shoulder transition draws into that spur effect, I'm, I'm calling it. Uh, compare that to this kind of harshness, right, in this joint, basically in this movement from the top over to the stem. Um, that at least stands out to me. Plus, the, there's this kind of rounded terminal direction in a throwout aglet uh, versus the kind of much more, again, typical slap serif, just straight edges uh, all over the place. And my last note is notice the directional serif in the bottom versus the you know two the bipedial two sided uh, serif on this side, and then just you know versus. Braces kind of traditional serif treatment on both sides of the, of the end. Yeah, that's good observations, and also to see how you know just how tiny, like these these serifs are actually quite, um, you know, they're not they're pretty short. They don't take up a lot of space, whereas Eglet they're like a huge part of the letter here. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in some of the other letter forms. So um, I don't know. Should we hop ahead? Yeah, we can hop ahead. Uh, the O. <laughs> so my my initial reaction is both of these O's definitely have straight vertical side portions, but you can really see here again, like uh, Thomas pointed out in the N, the construction on brace, you're going to see this throughout. It's like little points here where it transitions from a curve to a straight point um, very suddenly, or a straight line very suddenly. So um, it's, you know, it has a very constructed feel and we'll see that flatness kind of throughout. Eglet definitely has a rounded transition. Um, and, you know, a little bit, f I'm seeing a difference, a little bit flatter here. And overall, this is a good way to demonstrate that the um, brace has a higher, I mean, compared to the bounding box here, we're seeing that brace is kind of has a little bit higher X height here than, um, than Aglet. So we'll also see how that plays out. Anything else you noticed? Yeah, I, I feel like Brace's brief was straight side, like his rigid sides, balance, curve on the top and bottom. Because uh, I think also, as you sent, you're noticing, it's the degree of the of the arch, right? That kind of stands out to me uh, between this flat sidedness and the roundness on the top, compared to as you noticed in uh, Agnolet. And yeah, also just interesting to see. This is the third. These are, this is like the th you know input was also a flat-sided round uh, system. I think it's interesting to see how these approaches are different. And perhaps maybe I would even say that I think Brace might have higher contrast compared to Aglet. Just I think in contrasting its stems 
the vertical stems to the horizontal transition point on the round tops and bottoms compared to uh, Aglet. So I don't know. What are your thoughts about that? I don't know. I kind of disagree with that. I think Aglet, I think there's more contrast in this O in the Aglet O than the brace. I don't know. I don't know. I have to look more. Yeah, we'll find. <laughs> we gotta look more. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep moving. Or maybe okay. they're similar. You know what? Maybe they're very similar. I'm not sure. I mean, there's a little bit more. If I'm looking at these, and if I'm squinting, I'm seeing, you know, a little, you know, lightness here where this kind of connects up to the stem a little bit more so than here. I think that the difference, I would say. But I agree with you. This is very dark. You know, we've got, you know, golly. I don't know. I That's the problem with contrast. <laughs> it's, really, <laughs> it's really, it's relational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is cool. We got the other spur wacky ser like this is huge. This is a very big um, attribute here. So like we'll definitely wow. It even like kind of like check out the baseline. It almost gosh, this is going to really stand out. It's going to be interesting. That's definitely going to be the um, distinctive defining point of this typeface for sure. Are these these spurs? Woo, won't be able to ignore those. Um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yes. You know, here's something else. Whenever we look at the D, we kind of like comment on taking an observation of the, the serifs up top to see how far out they um, kind of reach. So the brace definitely overall, we've seen that those serifs are going to be less prominent than an aglet. And again, you know, we've got this same sort of approach here, very flat, abrupt side. It's kind of a weird looking letter in it, you know, just on its own. I don't know. So give me your thoughts. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. I mean, there's a couple of things. One is you can also confirm the your your statement about the x height from this, right? Because look where the notice where the you know ace how short the a sender is, right? Just relationally compared to aglet. So your op, your your observation about the x height being larger on the body of brace is uh, is correct from what, what you can see from here. Uh, yeah, I think I I but brace is kind of it's kind of interesting, right? Like. Aglet's main main call to fame, or just kind of what what is about that makes it unique, is that kind of spur angle energy, a forty five degree energy on the terminals like this. While brace is a very programmatic, very programmatic, like a program. Excuse me. Of okay, we got a round. They got flat on the sides. And we got just we got just cut it in. We just got to go for it. Just snap it in and arch it over to the stem. Uh, I think it's like to the point of being dogmatic about it. Uh, perhaps it even though I would argue, yeah, I would agree. A sense of kind of like awkwardness. I think the reason you may feel a sense of awkwardness, Aaron, about this is my instincts. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Is notice that there's a kind of direction momentum, right? Like the move on that top curve and the especially on the top one is pushed to the left. That way, there's some tapering allowed uh, at the joints, right? While on the bottom, it's much more kind of more towards the middle, right? So by having this kind of push to the left, I would expect the kind of curve to continue, right? Kind of push over to the side like this, which doesn't because it's get, it gets cut off very abruptly at these points. But that's just my instincts. You can correct. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's my, uh, I sense also a sense of instability in that brace D. I think that, that'd be my instincts about why that is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, looking at it up, just like in isolation like this, to me, the brace um, approach, it, I mean, it kind of feels like this letter is fighting against the system. Like it really doesn't feel natural to me. You know, like like you're saying, all of the that stress is kind of here and it's fighting to make its way over and it's not treated exactly the same on the bottom. So it's kind of like at odds with the the logic of like how, how it's trying to use that system. Egglet seems like this to me, this seems much more at peace, like as a form. It just feels like, oh, I can't, I'm supposed to look this way. It's, it, it, I don't know how to describe that better. But although, you know, it is interesting to see that, you know, they did have to, um, the designer did make this a lot more narrow in here. You know, it, it, it's not following the same construction around. It gets more tapered here and it is a little, you know, boxy here, but it, it feels natural the way it's like smoothing into it. To me, this feels more of a, a struggle. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that is the word, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a struggle. So, all right, on to the A. Cool. More struggle, I would say. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the brace. Yeah, brace. It seems like it's 
oh gosh what do i how do i say this you know it, before like in some of the letters like oh we the O was easy because there was like a symmetry to it, but the A, it's like this curve up here, it's not like a symmetrical curve. It's like higher up here than it is here Try because it had to make, you know, if you notice the point here, it's lower here. Like this, it's, it, it's not like a symmetrical movement because the designer needed to make this open space for it to register as an A. So it's like, it's not really, a, it's not really living into the system and because it's such a uh, rigid system it's like it, it to me it looks kind of unnatural when it it doesn't fit in or you know when it's not able to be naturally applied so anyway um but obviously you know you can recognize this is supposed to fit with the rest of it we've got that same you know approach there the bowl of this kind of feels a little like it's working maybe a little better to me than the top um and you know also i noticed like there's a lot of darkness here this didn't get thin here like i would maybe i don't know maybe expect like it did here or i don't know it feels like there's some weight things happening in the in the brace a i think that i, I don't quite like but um again egglet i oh, to me this just feels it's like a refreshment when I look at this. It feels like it's just so smooth and it's working much better. It's not struggling as, as much as the brace is. I'll clear that. What are your thoughts? Tell me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's as you're saying, right? I think a couple of parts. Part one is, yeah, again, the, I think the tension embraces struggle, tension, you know, what, take, <laughs> pick your adjective to describe this, but um, I think it's because it's it tries to be so programmatic, like so rigid in its program um, the verticals, the vertical to round transition. Um, but notice that they kind of give it some, any, a, a, they want to maintain some calligraphic energy or some kind of like readability that but then just pure geometry by this push of weight right here and here versus the tapering as occurring at the joints. So it's trying to incorporate some logics of type design into a programmatic system. And it's causing this weird, uh, uncanny valley. It's almost like a a doll or a robot that looks too human, but it, <laughs> but it's not enough. I mean, if I can give a, if I can give a analogy, a similar here again, like it's a, that, this is always this idea of pushing over to the left. So that's why this is lower than up here, as you as Aaron observed. Um, I sense that that is the energy. That's the tension I'm sensing in this project overall. <laughs> You know, again, because I got an even idea, like, we must have rounds on top and bottom at all points. Like, there's no way we could allow something like this to exist, for example, if I were to diagram mm. another possibility. Uh, I'm not here to draw other suggestions, but I'm just pointing out, like, the program was done so systematically uh, that any time uh, in a round shape, the tops and bottom must be round. It can't be this kind of introduction of a flatness to try to make it more naturally feeling in the logic or the system. Um, yeah. And by the way, like this thing is like, there is tapering going on. I think it's interesting to in an aglet, like basically if you look at, you know, these areas, these are much more tapered in, right? Versus this, or even this area. So you can see, the, so it's not like this tape, that's what I'm saying. It's incorporating typographic logic. Uh, and the way aglet did this tapering really, again, emphasizes this. Like for me, aglet, like the, those spurs terminals are like, the whole show it's what i see <laughs> yeah and notice how much darker it is than like you know the opposing force up here like this still this is just so much darker it's really gonna stand out um yeah whew, this yeah. will be interesting <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like both of them are playing with this tension of like roundness with abruptness right yeah. like yeah. it's kind of the if you give it like a summarization of both these projects that seems to be the overall idea with the idea of like kind of like a jarringness right the jarringness of the abrupt right uh played out in different ways i could see that across both projects definitely let's see what's our next letter Ooh. ah uh, the g class this is really emphasizing that point yeah yeah please go ahead you go first I, as i i was talking to aaron off the, like while we were prepping these files and uh the main note for me is this s curve momentum in the spawn of that G it's I don't know why it's <laughs> I don't know I it's just it's it's uh yeah it's something that really stands out and just compare that to just e even the energy on top and bottom here right it's a very different momentum uh 
than this spine treatment over here. Yeah, I think again, this is where this kind of unresolved, like this tension, resistance, uh, fighting with oneself. We're seeing that across the project. I think I, th I find the spine of this G really kind of emphasizes that point. Yeah, I'm really yeah. surprised they didn't choose to just make a, you know, single single story G, given you know the the system they've been using. I'm really surprised that they chose to tackle something a lot more complicated like this with a lot more things that don't naturally fit in with, with the system. I was really shocked. I'm not sure why they did that. I give them credit for ambition. I give them credit for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Because there are little pieces like, you know, just the ear where it's like that, to me, that doesn't quite fit with you know, in, in the other letters, that probably would have been a point and then a curve, not like a smooth curve. Like, you know, it's like there's there's some things in there that I, I don't quite, I don't know. Like you said, this this feels like this doesn't fit the system, this very shallow curve. It doesn't quite fit. So I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of this, of the G. But then again, I, I guess we got to see it in context to see why they did what they did. Yeah. Um, yeah. How um, do you... <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just comparing it to Agonly, I mean, it's, there is a kind of like, again, if you were to critique Agla, I think I, you can see the systematic approach of this kind of spur energy at all, at any point possible. It's a very natural point on the ear of the G to do a that kind of 45 degree angle energy. But I just want to take note of that. This is such a pro, both of them are very pro, are very, have a program and they're executing that program, like as, as, trying as much as possible to maintain it across every letter as much as possible. So I think I think it's also interesting to note that similar mindset about how to approach this lab serif project uh, across both the designs. Um, it's interesting because I feel like this G, especially if you remove this, if you remove this, got rid of that, this could easily have been a, a kind of rounded sans serif. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that just very interesting. But again, like this, uh, that that separation, that difference. Gosh, it's so beautiful. It looks like a cute little bug. I don't know. I oh, you like it. you're enjoying it. You're like, it, you're looks, like it reminds me of like some kind of what that busy town. I don't know. Okay, what is wrong with me? Okay, it looks like a cool little insect or something. Um, <laughs> something that's kind of neat to observe in these in second story G's is just to see the how like where things line up here on the left side. Mm -hmm. I always find it interesting to just like look at the balance and see you know how where these shapes go in and out, you know, you can see here that, uh, oh, maybe this is a better way to demonstrate it, like lining up what's going on. This goes in so much further here, the um, connecting, I don't even know what that's called, the terminology wise. Yeah. yeah. Like, but the, you know, this goes out outward that direction. So that's kind of an interesting observation when you're, um, if you're studying typefaces to kind of see how, how people balance weight and stuff where this, the egglet feels kind of, if, to me, it feels like it's. Um, I mean, it is more compact. The brace is has kind of a more of a triangular sort of motion going outward and stuff. So it's just kind of see to, interesting to see how that works. It's like you know going backward into the negative space, back into the character that's going to be in front of it. Whereas this one's more um, pushing to the, toward the right. So anyway, kind of cool, kind of neat to see. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Great observation. Thank you for adding oh, that. Oh, thank in. you. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, fun. Okay. All right. You want, you want to jump on this? What a distinctive K for egglet. I think that's quite obvious. I mean, Brace, this is, to me, you know, if you close your eyes and think of what a slab surf K looks like, you know, I guess you would probably imagine something like this with Brace. Although, hmm, I would say, like, to me, um, this counter up top, or, you know, I kind of feel like this top arm is maybe pushed out a little too far to the right or something it feels like there's maybe a little too much white space here but that's just me being super nitpicky or something but anyway fo focusing on egglet which is very you know unique it's cool to see one of these disconnected k's and the bl very blunt i mean how neat is this to decide to echo the very large uh, spur treatment we saw on the a and D and you know all yeah, that. Yeah, D, G. And, yeah, and, yeah, right. Repeated here um, with a very, you know, it's a very thick, blunt bottom of the K, and just to also to see how contrast was had or was was handled here to try to like figure out how do you make this feel substantial. They had to designer had to really 
kind of put a lot of weight on this bottom bottom leg of the K um, versus the top here. It's very very cool balance. It's very interesting. That'll be fun to see in context. Yeah, I I, I I I have to I have to agree with you on that. I mean, specifically, what's interesting too is to notice that it's the radius of the curve, right? Notice all the other ones. There are much more of these squared, rounded squares. Mm -hmm. This is like a perfect oval kind of terminal at the end, which again, I think it, it's getting me to get to feel like the instinct for Aglet is like this intent, like it wants to purposely play off this forty-five degree terminal energy as much as possible. Uh, to the point of like that's kind of one of the most overcoming, overpowering things you want to see in the whole project. You know, I also say that because of what you're saying about the contrast. Like this is dramatically higher contrast than this angle up here, which is interesting compared to the lower contrast relationships of these guys together. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because I don't because before we were in this, we were in a kind of questioning which one was higher contrast between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, at least on this letter, I would absolutely agree that this one's higher contrast because of that move over here. Uh, so it's interesting. I want to definitely see. I'm curious to see how this is going to work out in text to confirm our observations. Nice, good call. Very cool. Ooh. Ah, X. Ooh, another. Yeah, here's another angled letter. You know, this isn't as wacky as the K um, in Eglet, but. Uh, you know, again, looking at the contrast, this Eglet did use a much higher contrast approach. You can see the difference between um, this this stroke width and this stroke width. So, you know, that's that's kind of confirmation. But what's going on here in the brace? Can you describe why that maybe looks a little odd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminds me. Of, I, I forgot which project we were talking about, but it was a other K. Like, I think the part that kind of gets me kind of uh, is I sense I see perfect symmetry in the counters, this feels like a flip job, meaning like they took one side, right? And then copy paste it, flipped it, they gave me the other side, which it's kind of, it's actually very surprising for this project. I, I say that because everything else we've seen such an intentionality to try to, even though being so pro, very programmatic in a system, trying to introduce typographic type design uh, know-how or a little, nuances to kind of soften the the brutalness of the program and you know you see an aglet where the basic point is you have the main stroke right on the left to right going over the secondary strokes kind of broker they kind of taper they uh they shift they have a shift you can confirm that because look at the counter if you look at the little counter arrows those white arrows produced by the negative by the strokes if you notice in, in Aglet, they're not perfectly aligned with each other. They're slight, especially the top bo top and bottom one. See, there's a difference, a gap between the two. In this one, they're directly aligned. That leads me to the instinct that this was done kind of in this copy-paste methodology. Sure. Uh, yeah, and that was, that was the part of the thing that stood out to me the most in this in this approach. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, like, even if they are even if they're not perfectly, or it's like even going the other direction, or it's like almost a little, I don't know, there's something about it. And that's the thing, like with, with X's, I mean, it's such a, uh, I think they're really difficult to, to draw. Um, but they are. yeah, the, the thing is also, it's just like this, you know, one of those letters where your eye plays tricks on you, where me, if, unless the bottom legs are like a little further out, you, than the top, you know, usually like this, they feel kind of too symmetrical. Like I, th I feel like it needs a little bit more width on the base or something like um, to feel a little more stable. There's something going on there. I don't know, but uh, anyway, tricky yeah. X. But I agree with your point actually looking like there's definitely moments I feel like I see like a shape that's like this and that shape like this. I don't know, is that what you're sensing too? Yeah, something. Yeah, it just, it's, it looks, yeah, I don't know, sorry. Hate to be, That's hate to be negative, but it's design. tricky. It's real tricky. It's tricky. You know, actually, I think this is important because I think a lot of designers, would, if you're getting into this, would probably draw like a very perfectly symmetrical X, but that's not how the game gets played. Like, that's not what type design does. Yeah. Uh, and it just feels uncomfortable because of that. And, it, and it's interesting because some of these letters, like in the English language, we don't use X very often, but like sometimes some of the you know not so commonly used letters that in english like they're sometimes they're used a lot in other languages so it's kind of important to like test a lot of these um in different contexts so you can see oh someone who's like let's say 
uh, writing in Finnish or something. They're going to use a lot of like K's in, uh, I think they use a lot of O's and K's or something like that. Anyway, it, but it's like, it's, it's kind of a, a good practice to test in different contexts so you can kind of see how things relate in um, for users all over the world. So um, anyway, so X is one of those where I think like maybe someone in a different using a different language might use this a lot more than we do <laughs> and it might be important we do. I, mean, I mean we do use it it's just like like xenophobia for example or like exoskeleton <laughs> or exercise yes <laughs> great like you're the first x word you thought of <laughs> xenophobia that's great okay i mean oh, but yes oh today's new yeah news today that's true anyway but yeah you're right <laughs> anyways i'm a big scrabble person so yeah that's a good word there you go okay yeah precisely Anyway, what are Moving we doing? On. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we move on to up some more observations about X height and relationship to the caps. Yeah. So this is probably pretty straightforward for people to see that um, in brace we've got to dis uh, we've got to disconnect. We the the oh, what am I trying to say? The ascender is higher than the cap height, which is a very very commonly seen thing. Where but in uh, egglet slab they are. They appear to be this exact same height. So that's just a different approach you can take. Um, just for side note, I think one of the things I've learned um, through typeface design is that uh, there's kind of an issue with legibility when you're looking at, like, let's say, you know, the number one and L, lowercase l, and like uh, uppercase, uppercase I. I. Thank you. Yes. Whereas in some typefaces so here you know you can kind of distinctly see that they're all different but in certain typefaces i think like ariel i don't remember there's there, whoops no it wouldn't well, Futura, have Futura's a great yeah, example Futura, of that. like all of these are designed like you know like the same and they just differ in height slightly and stuff and it's really hard to tell them apart so anyway that's it's kind of nice sometimes when you have that differentiation so it's easier to to read a word like illegible for instance there'll be an i and two l's and next to one another um it's easier for people to read i would say but Anyway, side, that's my rant. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> what else do you no, see here? It's all good. I think that's an important thing to comment to talk about or add on. Yeah, I guess, again, just again, we can confirm kind of the largeness of the body of brace. It just like the letters can like such, they seem to be so overpowered in the space, right? Yeah. Just compared to uh, Aglet, which I think, uh, again, will affect its color and effect one type set together the same size. So this, this is just a phenomenon, this is an issue of type of just designers using type, right? Is that like, it's not like every typeface has exactly the same fit. When you, so when you spec 10 point on one typeface and 10 point on another, you may get very different results because of the proportion of X height to cap height to A center space. So those, re those relationships have those effects. And we can see that demonstrated here between looking, comparing next them next to their capital H's next to them. Perfect. So off to the great adventure of punctuation and accent characters. Yeah. Here's a little sampling. So um, so this is interesting. You know, like we've been saying, the X height of brace is so high that, you know, there's a very limited space to fit those accent characters um, into that into that space up there. So, I mean, gosh, these A's with an accent character, they look so much larger to me than like the cap H. Like they just look ginormous comparatively. So it's yeah. going to be... Yeah, it's gonna be weird to see that in in context of um, some writing to see how that relationship works, and then, um, oh, you know, I'll let me let you talk for a, a moment. Well, no, go like go. We have you have, you have a momentum. <laughs> go. Close okay. This. Well, also, you know, it's it's interesting to see the contrast, the, the style of of they're called curly quotes. This style, and I guess you know, here the comma. The choice to use this kind of design um, with a, you know, this is a big amount of contrast going on right here, which you don't really see anywhere else in the typeface. I thought that was kind of an unusual choice to make them very complicated forms instead of something like, you know, let's, I don't know, it's just something more blunt, you know, like a little angled this or that or whatever. So it, it's, it adds a lot of complication. And I would say like, it, I'm going to guess in context, this is going to look very distracting because of the, because, because of the thinness up here, that's going to be my, that's my hunch. Um, and then, you know, I feel, I don't know. I feel like Tilda looks a little odd. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the accented characters um, in Brice, but uh, Aglet, they feel really smooth. They feel like kind of, I would say, you know, especially these look 
they're very kind of consistent in size. The um, diuresis and like these, you know, periods, those are very, you know, I guess they're all quite dark. And especially here in the quotes, these are co very, I would say, very large as opposed to this. These look kind of um, quite heavy and um, will also draw your eye, but for like kind of the opposite reason, I would say, of, of the brace quotes. I don't know. Um, but I mean, I like them. They look happy and friendly, but you know, this is a very, very long tail, I would say, and it's going to be kind of interesting. You know what? They probably did that to counterbalance the big um, spur on the A and stuff. Yeah, I'm guessing exactly. that's why they did that, because otherwise it'd be hard to, to see this in comparison. It had to be big and bold. Okay. I'll shush. Yeah, that's ahead. my instinct. Again, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like kind of the again, the program is these is these spurs. I think I think that's Aglet's whole idea. So I would say it probably the instinct to have these quotes curls like this, like these straight angular points, is to mimic that energy. That'd be my instinct as well. Um yeah, so let's see. I mean I, <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Like, it feels like this H is so diminutive compared to <laughs> its lowercase yeah. letters. Uh, I most expect this to be wider or taller, one or the other, uh, because of that. But um, I'm trying to think the best way to put this. Uh, yeah, you stole most of my thunder, unfortunately. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah, I guess, um, actually, what was interesting, too, I just want to point out. Notice, OK, so notice the G. Remember that G had that weird waggle curve, right? I find it interesting that the decision to make this uh, straight angled, right? I'm actually a little surprised by that. I guess I'm kind, of, I'm, I'm kind of getting surprised by where the program, as you're saying, the program chooses to disregard its logic and other times to really force it into it. Yeah. Good observation. Yeah, I think that's the main thing, the tension I'm sensing too. Because actually, because for example, these quotation marks, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do like this form, right? Like something like that, mm -hmm. uh, at the minimum, you know, maybe or maybe even. I guess because they wanted that, they wanted that curve. They wanted that curve desperately it, in there. But it's yeah, it's funny because it's like I mean, okay, there's a curve here. Could you not have just? Why is this like segmented? Why didn't they just make that? You know, like the curve of the G. Remember that um, the ear on the G was curved. Like why didn't they do that? Yeah. Here? I don't know. It's kind of unusual. Also, like this was just you were talking about how small this H looks. Like the to me this question mark looks so wide compared to the h it's just kind of funny to me i don't know there's something unsynced uh, up yeah i don't know i'm not sure but anyway we, what's our next one is it in context yeah, yeah. no nope, oh, we got one, word, right? one more word yeah. where we just kind of look at a lot of uh kind of basic characters next to each other to get a comparison can, hmm. can we can we just say straight up like again the spur system is just overwhelming <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is the main it's the main show of agony like, like that's like the main thing i see when i look at this yeah especially this you are next to each other that's like a really funny one it's like i almost if i just saw those two characters next to each other i wouldn't even register their letters or something it's just like a lot of you know weird abstract stuff going on it's quite funny um i mean It'll be interesting to see. So, I mean, I assume, so So we like to try to, we're starting to try to talk about context as well when we're talking about these typefaces. What would these be used for? So, Eglet, I'm going to guess that this, I mean, it's, it's so distinctive. This seems like this is a more of a headline branding sort of con of uh, usage rather than, you know, supposed something that's supposed to be quiet and, and um, you know, text-like. I, I don't think that would work for this. But brace, it's going to be interesting because, you know, something we've talked about previously is that sometimes some of the design decisions that up close look really distinctive when when you step back away at a different scale, they kind of aren't as noticeable. And I would say that's the case of brace. These, Even though we talked about all these points and straight segments, when you kind of look at the word from far away, squint your eyes, it looks pretty normal. But I would say because these are such bigger moves on aglet like these these serifs they're so much more structural they're not as much of a superficial move it's it's a very big like skeletal move it's it the the letter is just like in the space it feels a lot different i don't know what do you think about that statement is that insane i know it's pretty accurate i think a big point is like you know we in type design we do talk about skeletons versus you know flesh versus uh clothing Right, it's kind of the metaphor. <laughs> actually, side note, the designer of Aglet, my he was actually side note, full record, he is a former 
my former instructor at Type of Cooper, uh, Jesse, Jesse Reagan. Right? Yeah, Jesse, cool. Yeah, uh, he actually describes type in that way. So I think your your analysis of that is actually very accurate. I would say. Ooh la la. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, so, I guess we can. Uh... Oh wait, actually, oh no, oh, what's no, up? no too late. We could too go. Late? I was just going to look one more time. Now that I'm looking at these, um, another interesting thing is when people are making decisions about character width, look at the M versus like the A. Um, this was interesting to me, like how narrow that M looks like compared to um, the other letters here. Like these, these all kind of seem like they're trying to be kind of similar, I don't know, similar importance or something. I, maybe just because of the M, maybe that's how I feel it. But it's, it's interesting to me, like some of these letters look really big compared to other ones. Like the U looks bigger than the B to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yes. ugh, there's, there's some weird kind of relative proportions of widths that it, the S is so wide. Like I don't know. Oh, well, then again, it is here too. But both are wide. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Not that that's bad. It's just sometimes it's interesting to see how uh, different widths are kind of taking care or kind of approached. Okay, never mind. I could go down a rabbit hole. Let's look at the, <laughs> at, the right, let's go. at the text. Cool. Yay! Ah, so wow. Like you were saying with the high X height, like look how much more kind of tech, it feels like this is much more crowded vertically than this. So that's, you know, that's the demonstration. So everyone can see like, that's what he means. Uh, Thomas is talking about with the X height. Like you can really see the the white letting like the lines in between each line here, but embrace with the same letting setting. It's just a lot more filled. So that's kind of my first takeaway. They seem very similar in, in, um, like darkness though which is you know i guess we've noticed that all throughout um what are your initial thoughts when you see these yeah well, a couple of things one we can definitely see then the attitude about punctuation is very different right the the brace feels much lighter in its punctuation right as we're pointing out specifically quote marks is kind of what we're we drew attention to Compared to again, especially over here, see this one right here. It's kind of really stand. It, you can see it. Get very much identify very quickly. Mm -hmm. They. What's interesting, I guess, overall from an overall like feeling perspective in text, like in this paragraph setup. They both kind of have this like rigid, but soft, like in but in very different ways. You know, I like they, but they have a. It like, yeah. So I'm, I'm having a little hard time articulating this. But the end result, they're very, they feel very similar in terms of, oh, it's rigid. There's some kind of mechanicalism behind this, but it's also soft at the same time. Uh, yeah, I actually, and you know what's funny? I know, Aaron, you said you felt like the spurs, those kind of spurish terminals in Aglet made it kind of unqualified to be a text space. It's actually not that bad. I don't mind it. It, it, gives, a certain, it gives a certain prickliness to it, I would agree. But it's not like, distracting to the point where I can't stand it and I hate it in tech settings at all. So that's definitely one, that's definitely the thing I'm seeing the most right now. You know what? I would completely agree. Now that I see this compared to brace, I find this much more easy to read and it's not as distracting. And you know what? I'm, I'm really noticing something we didn't quite talk about yet was just character spacing, like the fitting the, these, because of these straight segments, like, and they, the short serifs, all of these letters feel like a lot more close together to me. They yeah, feel way tighter body. Yeah. Really tight. This has like a lot of room to breathe. I this, I find this far more legible than brace. Egglet is like to me. That's it. Just it's so clear. Oh, I really like it. Oh, anyway, I wonder what brace would look like if it had a little bit more, you know, uh, character letter spacings. Like to me, then this this does make this kind of illegible. This I wouldn't want to read this like it's like yelling yeah. at me it's, i mean yeah. it's, it's not helping that the 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 letter the fitting is so as we said the the letting is so tight by yeah. default because of that like it's not helping the case for it but yeah it's like yeah. i'd feel like i'd have to do as a designer i'd have to do more work on this i'd have to do adjust letting settings and like maybe even some character spacing settings for for this to feel a little bit more readable as like as a, in this context although you know it could be used as a um display typeface where you see those details but like to me this like you said egglet is working really well at this at this size i'm like really pleasantly surprised i like it and it has that kind of typewriter feel or something or it's yeah it's, you know i like it 
That's cool. Yeah. It's like typewriter E, like that kind of yeah. like kind of inspired by that aesthetic. But yeah, it's actually, yeah. I think a much, you know, as proven by Jesse, I know Jesse uh, as my instructor, he, uh, this is kind of in his ethos. It's kind of like quirky as hell <laughs> on the detail. But when you actually in application, you can see a lot of uh, fundamentals, good fundamentals of spacing and color and just kind of comfort, feeling very comfortable, you know, uh, engaging yeah. with it. Right. Yeah. So it's, Love it. I agree. The kind of final, so far from what we've seen, it's kind of like brace is kind of, it's in that headline universe display headline, maybe a, a splash of a word or two. It would work. Okay. In that, uh, sure. I think is actually, it actually has a lot more leg room, I think in a, in a smaller copy application and it might be yeah. very useful for that. Nice. Ah, and here we are in a, in more of a headliney environment. Yeah, headline context. So here, you know, yeah, in this context, then you really do notice those, um, those angled serifs um, in Eglet for sure. They really, oh wow, and look at the Y. This was cool. I'm glad we got to see the Ys together because this mm. is a, this is also really distinctive, like the K we were looking at. Huh, interesting. And it's weird because it's like the you know since it's the reverse stroke to this, the contrast is lighter down here. So anyway. Yep. I'm ca that's catching my eye. Anyway, but um, this feels more at home to me than it did in the text setting. Like this feels like it was designed at this scale for this sort of context. Like the the spacing seems better here for this purpose. But um, man, yeah, this this is definitely more of a distinctive. Like so unusual. Look at the, it looked like little eyelashes or something. I know, like oh. little like little <laughs> like a little antenna, like a little yeah. antenna sticking out. Yeah, <laughs> which cool. is interesting. So I guess the question is, do you do you, Aaron? Do you feel like Agnon is like more bill for a, like a body copy usage, or do you feel yeah, like it works both in both I scenarios? I can't believe it. I think you're right. I think I I'm completely reversing my ideas at the beginning of this that it uh, looks more like a text sort of thing i mean this i mean obviously you could use this but it's the funny thing about branding typefaces display typefaces like if one company if one company decided to use this as their branding typeface like no one else would be able to use it basically you know no other big company because it's so distinctive whereas this like i think a lot of people could use it because it's a little bit more subtle um in its you know effect or something you know what i mean like it's 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 more anonymous than egg egglet i would say um no, I don't want to say that. Now I'm saying like nobody buy Eglet because it's too distinct. <laughs> but no, that's not what I mean. But you know, it, it's it's just uh, uh oops. I don't know. Redact it. Because <laughs> you want to you want to just redact <laughs> the statement. It's fine. <laughs> no, but this this seems a little bit more tame and you know I don't know broad and it's kind of um display application a lot of types of things could use this but this is yeah that felt so good at that s smaller size oh i loved it i would, I would agree that, i would agree that i, I think actually like, again like kind of surprise surprise is it's actually i think a very sound body copy face it looks like it just yeah. from observation uh when one would not think so considering when we first inter got introduced by it right mm -hmm. uh i think it, it can work in the display settings but it it doesn't feel like it's natural home yeah yeah, I think you know I, what I mean. Like I don't, I, I think it's temperament. It's te typefaces have temperaments. Uh, I really believe that. Where right? they just like work better in certain contexts than others, sure. uh, and that seems to be the impression I'm getting overall. Yeah, and I wonder, Aglet. you know, if they wanted to make like maybe a slightly more display version of this, it would be like maybe these serifs wouldn't be quite so angled, and then it would still tie in with this size, but it would it wouldn't be quite so distracting. I think might be might be more appropriate or something. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Cool. Yeah. I will see one. I will see one more one fair note to brace. It actually mm -hmm. seems to work. Slight, like as a as words better. I'm seeing in this context. Like I'm not being so like my mind's right. on mel melting right. a little crazy here when I'm looking at these letters and going, oh, why are these curves like this? You oh, know? the brace. Yeah, yeah. If it looks yeah. better as words for sure, rather than up close or one at a time. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree with that too. Okay, so up oh, one last shot. Slide these constructions. <laughs> <laughs> Yippee! Yeah, that why? Yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah, that was that was, that was a fun comparison. Um, hopefully, people can kind of see how those different approaches really made a very different feeling when um, you know looking at it at this scale. It's kind of interesting. Something two typefaces with kind of similar weight and uh, just those details 
made them quite quite different. Very, very radically different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Aaron, thank you again for being part of Font Review. Thanks. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to go check out the Eclipse. Sorry for the relevant text, everybody. It's going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. And by the way, if uh, you're hearing this and you're going to be at TypeCon, we'll both be there at TypeCon Boston. So hopefully, yeah, you know, we'll run sign, into us. Sign some autographs. Say, just kidding. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. No, not even. Well, our just come say hi. Yeah. Come say hi. Let's yeah. tell us that you hate our ideas. Yeah. Tell me why I'm wrong. I would love to hear it. It's good. No, it's fine. It's just, we'll share your <laughs> thoughts. We always, we always appreciate comments on our videos. So we love it. Come check them out. Yeah, it's always great. And those, and that's, and those people out there hearing and learning new things about fonts. Yeah. Aaron, have a great week. And Thanks I'll see you on, I'll, of course, I'll see you on Friday. Great. Bye, everyone. Bye.